Hello and welcome to this YouTube tutorial on Beginning Java. Today we're going to look at the life cycle of the object and more specifically how the object gets created from start to finish. So let's do this now. So I've created three classes here, a child class that extends middle class. And just to point out here, some people get confused by this, but the super class of this child class is actually middle class. And that's what's exactly going on here. It's not actually the super class or the base class, as some people like to call it. And then, of course, middle class's super class is superclass.java. And then everything ends up here. And then this is the absolute base class. So let's go ahead and walk through this entire process because this is really critical if you're going to become a professional object-oriented programmer. So we come down here and the new keyword invokes our constructor. And then the child class constructor kicks off. And what's going to happen here is he's going to get executed and then he's going to see this extends keyword and he's going to go over to middle class and pass control over to the middle class. And we're going to go over here. And remember, this is an implicit call to the superclass. It's right in here, actually. So just keep that in mind. It's an implicit call, because if you remember in previous tutorials, I said that unless you type it out here, it's an implicit call. So he's going to go over here, and then the middle class constructor is going to get executed. He's going to do roughly the same thing that the child class constructor did. He's going to go up here, see this extends keyword, and then do his implicit call to his super, which of course is superclass.java. And then this constructor is going to get executed to go ahead and start everything off, and he's going to build the superclasses portion of the object. And then all of his variables and all of his methods are going to be placed into there. And then when he's done, it's going to go back to middle class, and then his constructor is going to get executed. And then he's going to go ahead and include all of his variables and all of his methods into the overall object. And then finally, we end right back where we started at the child class constructor. And then he's going to go ahead and do his work and build all of his objects and methods into the final object. And here we, of course, said x equals 50. So 50 is going to be assigned to the variable x. And as a result of him being assigned to x, he's also going to be initialized. And then all of the work is done. We have our final object over here. He's now in memory. And then we can go down to the main now and we can start using him. And this is kind of the way I like to think of it. Our object can start doing his work now. He can start going to work. So, you know, now we can go ahead and do a call to our object and we'll do our favorite system.out.print. And we're going to go ahead and print the contents of this method from our newly created object. You get the idea. He's going to go ahead and do his work now and do the very things we want him to do down here in the main. So that's pretty much it for this tutorial. I hope you found it helpful. And in the next one, we're going to look at the life cycle of the all important method. And we'll start right from here and work our way into the object to see what it's doing from start all the way back to the finish. 